All right. We'll start with you, Connell. Good morning, Councilmember Thomas and Chairman Gray. Uh, today I'm here to testify about the issue of lowering voting, uh, voting age. As you know, I'm a big youth advocate, and I also run the U.S. Youth Chamber of Commerce, so I'm also a big youth business advocate. I strongly agree that the idea of, and it's the time for a serious proposal for the, from the United uh, Kingdoms and Massachusetts to California about lowering the voting ages in their uh, jurisdictions. The National Youth Rights Association, also known as NIRA, is getting involved with chapters in New York, California, and joining groups around the country who are working actively to lower the voting age to 16. This, this is one simple step of, that, can, sorry, sorry, that can greatly improve the voting age turnout, increase in elections, increasing government responsibility, and reinvigorating our democracy in state after state around the world are allowing young people to vote in elections and have uh, substantial positive effects. In order to give this proposal full time to demonstrate its numerous benefits, the, eight, the voting age, I mean the voting age in D.C., the District of Columbia, should be lowered to 16 for all elections for two years. I mean for the next two election cycles until 2014. Further, lowering the voting age to 16 will increase in political, I mean politics among both adults and young adults. It would help bring empathy. I mean, empathetic adults back to the polls. Studies show that young people and their parents who participate in a national market election bring enthusiasm for, politi for politics back to their parents who vote in higher numbers. This trickle-up effect has its greatest impact among <coughs> parents from low socioeconomic backgrounds. This is especially important in the District of Columbia which has a high number of low-income families. Young people who greatly benefit from a lower voting age by becoming more politically active and knowledgeable in the United States. The Kids Voting Program has brought millions of young people to the polls, increasing their empathy for voting and knowledge of the world around them. The impact was mostly strong felt among young people from low-income uh, backgrounds. Young people who become more active in their uh, and blind votes, I mean, then blindly voting for candidates. Teens voting would uh, lead to a long-term electoral process who did let young people vote, encourage turnout among their parents. A study by Stephen, a Stanford University professor, found that increased political discussion between parents and children were major, a major factor in increasing voting turnout. The 26th Amendment prohibits discrimination of the bias of age once a citizen has reached the age of 18, it does not prohibit a state from setting a lower voting age if it chooses to. But the District of Columbia is a federal capital of the United States and is a, also a city which, with its own laws and regulations. As the District of Columbia, as you know, is a hybrid between a state and a federal, and a federal jurisdiction. The process by which laws are passed is unique among the American uh, judicial system here. The general clause, which allows the city council to pass, as you know, is found in D.C. Code Section 1-204 from 1995, which gives the right of the city council to pass laws which are approved later approved by a, a committee in the United States Congress. Act, an active subject to all uh, restriction limitation imposed on the states by the 10th section of the first article of the Constitution of the United States. Young people have a strong interest in politics, generally despite the controversial wisdom. Once a young person exam example of this can be found throughout articles and videos of the latest presidential election, many young people came out in numbers to states their opinions on not only in two presidential candidates, but on the state and on the of their state and their country in international affairs. Polls after polls suggest young people want the right to vote, the interest being early in childhood and continuing to high school. In 1992, a, ch a child amusement park in Philadelphia area conducted a survey where young people ages 8 to 12, it found that 89% wanted the right to vote. Among teens, this increased in voting uh, a 1991 poll at a mock election in 
Minneapolis, Minnesota found that 73 percent of teens between the ages of 12 to 17 supported a voting age of 16. Overall, young people are ready and willing to vote if they're given a chance. And for a city that is a strong advocate about voting rights for itself, can't should support showing the younger citizens to giving them the right to vote because later on they're going to be decision makers, they're going to be the leaders and the CEOs of companies that will be able in the position of power to help our city become even greater than it is today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Connell. Connell, you recommended that we lower the voting age to what, 16? Yes. Do you think youth can responsibly handle that? I do. Okay. Uh, why do you think they wouldn't be unduly influenced by others who would want them to vote in a particular way? Well, as a, we've, as a, we've seen some instances recently where, you know, even with the voting age, you know, being 18, and if, you if you're going to turn 18 by the time the uh, election takes place, you know, if you're 17, you know, we've seen people being allegedly, I'll put it that way, allegedly, I've seen some of it, but I'll say allegedly, being paid uh, to vote in straw polls and that kind of thing. How do we avoid, uh, how do we avoid abuse? recognizing that when you're 16 or 17 years old, you are really still quite impressionable uh, and potentially vulnerable to the influence of others. Well, one one solution to that is before, if it was lower to 16, before they're 16, is actually put them through mock elections in their schools. <clears throat> so you know how various agencies in D.C. In, to have youth representation in the city, actually let them vote in those young youth representatives so they know how the political system is, so they can start developing, you know, their minds to be more civically engaged and know the right person to vote for. Because there's adults who, as you just state, the same thing happens to them. People try to prey on them because they may not be as politically savvy or politically aware of what's happening. Because um, I've seen that firsthand when I was in Ohio on the Obama campaign, that there were adults over there in Mahoney County, which is a very... Uh, poor county that they were taken advantage of because they didn't know a lot about the political system. And that's one of the things that I believe in D.C. schools and our city should do is educate young people more on the issues in the city, letting them be, have more involvement in government, let them uh, improve D.C. government. Because when I took D.C. government class when I was young, it was very brief. I, I had to get active in the council after I got involved in the council office as an intern. That's when I really started learning about how the city uh, was run. And when I, by the time I was 17, I knew a lot about politics. Before then, a year before then, I didn't know anything. And that's why we, the government and uh, other organizations such as schools have taken involvement in teaching kids, you know, how to be, make their mind up, how to uh, tell the politician, you know, it's giving you the runaround and things like that. <laughs> Is that what politicians do? <laughs> what, what do you think more we can do? Um, you know, we've, we've got a, a, a council intern program here now, which is designed to open the door to young people. We do these hearings every month, as you probably heard earlier. This is our 30th monthly hearing, uh, which is, I guess, equivalent to about two and a half years, right, of having youth hearings. What do you think more we can do to get young people engaged in the civic and political life uh, of the city and be knowledgeable about it along the way? Well, one thing is, like I said before, more youth involvement in government. Um, I, I sit over, I'm a commissioner over uh, Serve DC, and they create a position as a youth commissioner, which actually has the same duties and titles as a, an adult commissioner. It's just youth representation. And I have the, the same uh, ability to make decisions on that commission over Serve DC. <coughs> and if we get more positions in the government, like the youth advisory councils, um, your internship program and having you, like youth city council members and things like that, you know, on the school board, the youth representatives actually letting young people uh, get in a position that they're elected by their peers. They go out, educate them, and actually be in a position of making decisions. They're going to become critical thinkers. They're going to become people. They're going to want to make the right decision because they're going to be held accountable by their peers. And as you know, your peers will hold you accountable as a politician. <laughs> 